Well, a change in the season is upon us. Soon birds will migrate to better climates. There is a concern, though, for avian flu. In today's Critters Uncaged, the Illinois Wildlife Medical Clinic, we have Dr. Sam Sander and Dr. Danielle Lang here with more information. So welcome to both of you. Thanks. I recall when kind of it was like spring, mm -hmm. summer, we had the concern of avian flu. Yep. But then I thought it kind of went away. Yeah. Is it, do we need to be concerned again? Yeah, so um, we worry about avian influenza mostly during the primary migration periods, which is in the springtime when birds are going from those southern climates up to the northern ones, and then again in the fall when they come back down again. And so we get a little bit of a reprieve during that summer period when the birds aren't moving around quite as much. Um, but now that the birds are starting to move back south again, we are starting to see some concerns, and we have seen uh, some outbreaks already um, in various different states with high path coming back again. So, Danielle, is there a certain type of bird that it tends to run in and how does it spread? Yeah, so any bird can be affected by avian influenza. There are some species, though, that are more susceptible. So our chicken species, ducks and waterfowl, as well as some raptor species. And each of them can have a little bit different clinical signs um, based on the species that get affected. Okay, let's talk about those clinical signs because, first of all, I wasn't even thinking about a chicken. <laughs> yeah, I know. Avian flu, like, no, we're just talking about, like, ro robins, yes. sparrows. Okay, so what kind of symptoms would maybe some chicken owners I guess be on the lookout for. Right, so just like if you and I got the flu, sometimes they can be very nonspecific symptoms. So just not feeling well, not acting right can be your general signs that you see. Some animals can develop respiratory disease. So having some signs of an upper respiratory infection, difficulty breathing, and then even in some cases we could see neurologic signs. So animals not walking around appropriately, oh. not doing things that they would do appropriately. So it can be quite variable. Now are there you know, ways to treat this or care for these animals? Yeah, so uh, avian influenza gets really tricky when we start talking about treatment because it has such impacts on like our chicken industry and the pet population as well. And so it is a state, is it, it is a regulated infection. So if we were to get a case in the wildlife clinic um, of avian influenza, we would have to call the state veterinarian and report that disease and work with them as to how to go forward. There is no true treatment for influenza, just like for you and I, it's a lot of supportive care, but we do have to worry about the kind of regulatory impacts and that infectious spread that the, um, we can see with avian influenza and that'll affect how we go forward with each case. Okay, I guess also I'm a little confused because don't most birds migrate away from Illinois? Are we having birds migrate to Illinois that we need to be concerned about avian flu? Yeah, so it's actually, it's the birds that are that migrate up to oh, stop like- stop by? Yeah, they're like coming, they're coming through on their way from Canada or Wisconsin, oh. Minnesota. It's those dirty Minnesota birds, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so yeah, so there's birds. There's kind of like four main highways, if you will, or flyways of where that birds will migrate from north to south. And we're in the Mi Mississippi flyway, and so birds in our region will come from Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern California, uh, Canada, and come through um, basically kind of the Mississippi Valley area um, on their way further south. Interesting. So besides like chickens, can this spread into other you know household mm -hmm. pets? Not that you maybe keep a chicken indoors, but pets that maybe people keep in their homes. It's certainly possible, and with this particular outbreak, what we're seeing is it's spreading to more species than we normally think of. As Danielle mentioned, there's um, kind of some target species that we think about, but in this outbreak, we've seen it in vultures, we've seen it in um, some blue jays, we've seen it in some species that are very atypical to be able to getting this infection. And even in zoos, we've seen it in penguins, and we've seen it in some other kind of unique species Gary. that we wouldn't oh, think about. Yeah. So we are seeing um, this infection jumping to other species, and we want to make sure everyone stays safe. Okay, very good. Great yeah. information. Thank Great you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you guys. Well, if you would like to connect with the Wildlife Medical Clinic, check out all the work that they do. We'll connect you over on our website, cliving.tv.